Hello everyone, my name is Ronak and you're watching VectorWart. In today's video, we will take a look at a UI control called ActiPro. ActiPro Avalonia controls are a diverse set of UI controls, components and themes for building beautiful Avalonia apps. This series provides a collection of advanced controls that are useful for many different types of applications including setting configuration controls, user prompts, message boxes, info bars, avatars, batches and much more. So without any further ado, let's get started. And for those who haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. It motivates me to create more such videos. So let's fire up Visual Studio and let's start by creating a new project. Uh, let's select Avalonia.net MVVM app. I have it in my recent projects. If you do not have it, please check out my previous video where I have uh, explained how to install this extension. So now moving ahead, I'll click on next, give this project a name. Let's say ActiPro and let's click on next and create so here on the right hand side you can see uh, we can see a designer and that is also the part of the avalonia extension which i have talked about several times in my previous videos and that will help you create uh, or work on your code while you can see it uh, in the designer so um, that is really helpful when you uh, do such uh, tasks so uh, while the application is building uh, so uh, the first things first, uh, we need the Active Pro NuGet package. So to do that, uh, we'll go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages. And here, uh, let's uh, search for Active Pro for Avalonia. And let's select the Pro controls and click on this and install. Apply the settings and accept. Uh, I see I have an error. Uh, you might not uh, see this error, but uh, I certainly do. So I think I know how to fix this. So let's go to updates and select all of them. Uh, let's uh, remove this and select all of them, all the packages. And uh, it looks like these packages need an update before I uh, install the Active Pro. So let's update all of them. Okay, so it says that there are no packages found now. It means all of them have been installed. And let's browse uh, and search for ActiPro again. And hopefully this time uh, we will not get the error that we received before. So let's click on install and apply and accept. And uh, I can see that the application is now installed. You have a green tick here on the toolkit. Uh, so let me close this. And now uh, let's uh, reference this uh, ActiPro in our app.xaml. So let's go to my solution explorer and open the app.xaml. And here uh, we need to do two things. First, uh, we need uh, the namespace of ActiPro. And then uh, the next thing is to add the modern theme. Uh, I will add this theme here right now. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about themes uh, in uh, the next video in detail. So uh, this is done. So let's save this and uh, go back to our window. And here uh, also we need to reference this namespace. And also next uh, we need to talk about the controls. So the fundamental uh, controls uh, product contains various using uh, interface controls that may be used in our application. Some of them are the avatar control, avatar group, badges, cards, circular progress bars, segmented bars, progress spinners, and much more. So let's uh, talk about them uh, one by one. Uh, it will be a short one, uh, so I'll not go in depth of these controls, but uh, let's start by adding an avatar. So ActiPro, add the ActiPro avatar control. So the active pro avatar control are used to represent people or objects. They can render a full size image, a centered glyph or a person's initials or text. So we have the avatar control. Let's add a description. Luke Cage and let's close this. So uh, this description property should be set to a short description of the data represented by the avatar. For example, a person's full name. In this case, we have Luke Cage. In many scenarios, this may be the only property that needs to be populated because the description will define the tooltip and also the auto-generated short text to be displayed as the avatar's content. So by default, uh, the content will take the description as the content to display when, or as a tooltip. So right now, this is quite big. So let me just add a width property and set the width, say, 100. And here you can see the avatar uh, displayed. And uh, you can also uh, 
set the text content or, uh, or explicitly define the content by typing say look content equal to look and uh, this definition or this uh, property changes the uh, uh, view from lc which is look cage to look so this is how the avatar control once let me run this application and see it in action so uh, here you can see one important thing to note is that i will actipro fundamentals is a paid product during the evaluation phase a pop-up will appear like this for most pro controls used so you can follow this uh, hide this prompt uh, steps and it will in details on how to temporarily sub suppress this uh, prompt during evaluation license. Once a license is purchased uh, or a short term evaluation li license is obtained, the license must be registered during application startup to prevent this license prompt from being displayed. And uh, that is how you can get rid of uh, these prompts. For now, I will just uh, click on this evaluate button so that I can um, explain you how these controls work. So I will click this and here you can see we have the uh, uh, avatar and here you can see the content displayed and the tooltip uh, uh, shows the description of what was written. So uh, this is the av uh, avatar control. Next, uh, we will talk about the avatar um, group control and that would be similar to the avatar, but uh, only in the sense that we have uh, multiple avatars within the uh, avatar group. So ActiPro. So I have this uh, code snippet here. So let me paste it and uh, get rid of some of these contents. And here you can see uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, avatar group, which has several uh, avatars nested within this. So the avatar group uh, control uh, is used to render multiple avatar controls as you see here. and um, the next one that we are going to talk about is the badge. So we can render a badge and to do that. So here let's start, but, but first uh, let's talk about what the badge is. So the badge and the numeric badge control can be used to provide contextual information for other elements or used on their own. So for example, if you have a button or a notification icon maybe, and there you can see a small badge on top of it, which uh, tells you how many notifications you have. So similar uh, thing, uh, this uh, control will help you achieve. So here, uh, let's create a grid. And uh, inside this grid, let's um, add the badge. So uh, here I have this piece of code uh, to demonstrate the uh, badge. So here uh, you can see uh, we have the panel and within the panel, I have the avatar uh, control, which we talked about. Uh, and this is uh, the avatar control. And we can also ch change the corner radius of the avatar. Uh, in the previous one, we uh, checked, uh, we did not provide a corner radius, which gave us a, a ellipse uh, avatar, uh, which is a default one. And here I have set the corner radius to 10. And the next control that is the badge control. Here I'm using a numeric badge and I've set the count as five, uh, which is shown here but because of this uh, there is no width and height to this grid i am getting it on the offset so let me set the width to 64 same as the avatar and height also to 64 and now you can see we have our uh, badge over here and uh, also it displays the count and we have set the class as accent and that is the reason we have the color blue over here and a render transform of five pixels by five pixels to, uh, and then the horizontal and uh, vertical alignment of right and to the bottom. Uh, so uh, that is the badge control. Next, uh, we will talk about the uh, circular progress bar. And the circular progress bar, uh, as its name uh, dis uh, tells us, it is used to display a ranged progress value using fluent animation. It is similar to a native linear progress bar, except that it renders the progress in a ring shape. So um, these circular uh, progress bars can be an integral part of uh, dashboard displays. So let's um, um, dis uh, show an example. So here uh, on the screen, I have uh, pasted a circular progress bar uh, with a width of 50, height of 50, and a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 100, and the value uh, the present value is 65. So we get this uh, nice looking um, progress bar. Here also uh, you can set classes equal to accent and that will change the uh, color 
to uh, blue. So there are different classes that you can use in Active Power Controls and that we will talk about in the next video. So for now, um, we have just set the class to accent and also we can uh, use the other properties as intermediate uh, to true. So which will be kind of a loading uh, circular progress and it will not be labeled. So next, uh, the next control that we are going to talk about is the uh, info bar. And the info bar is also qu quite interesting control. Um, so let me close this. And um, so the info bar can be used to display essential information to a user without disrupting the flow or the user flow. So uh, here we have a simple uh, looking info bar with the title uh, and a message. So let's run this. And here you can see we have our info bar and you can choose to close this information and uh, there are several other uh, severity levels uh, for these information or the info bar so here you can set the severity of uh, the message uh, or the information to information success warning or error by default uh, an info bar is displayed with information severity but the severity property can be set to any one of the info bar severity values each severity value automatically applies a default icon and background brush to visibly distinguish one severity from another for example let's uh, take the warning severity and here you see let me set a width not a width but height to this uh, Okay, so I have set a height uh, to this and now you can see uh, when I set the severity warning, uh, this background and the icon changes. So let me change this to say uh, error and the icon and the background changes. So this is how we use the uh, info, info bar. You can also set action buttons on the info bar and that you can achieve by um, adding the action bar uh, and let's close this over here and within the info bar let's uh, add the actipro info bar dot action and within the action let's add a button which will um, perform an operation when uh, this uh, specific action is taken So now uh, you see uh, we have a button within the uh, info bar and when I run this application you can see that we have this resume sync button you can change these properties of the button just like a normal button yeah, you can also add icons uh, here uh, instead of an action for example if I say info bar dot and then you can add an icon here and instead of a button here you will provide uh, the image source for that icon so next um, the next button or the sorry not the next button but the next uh, control that we would be talking about is the segmented bar so a segmented bar allows a user to select a single item within with support for fluent animations when changing uh, when changing selections um, so let's add a segmented bar over here So here uh, you can see I have uh, added the segmented bar on the screen and uh, let's set a height to this say 50 points and uh, now uh, you can see we have this uh, let me remove this is enabled and you can set the enable or disable uh, for each segment bar item and uh, now, when you see this uh, application running, you will see the segmented bar uh, with all these uh, items. And here you can see it has this nice uh, animations. You can also add some other classes over here. For example, you can add a class called theme hyphen outline accent. And now you can see that we have an outline for these selected items 
let me run the application and here you can see uh, we have that border for each selection that we make so uh, the last one on our list uh, for today's video is the progress spinner so the progress spinner are used when some form of progressing is occurring to uh, tell um, the end user that something is happening so there are several uh, types so you can use the ring spinner a ring spinner uh, control renders an animated ring uh, where the two ring uh, segments end uh, chase each other around the circle so the animation property that is used is is spinning property uh, and we can set that to true to activate the animation spinning so let's uh, see it with an example uh, let's change the width and height of this to say 50 points and here you can see let me zoom in so we have our ring spinner uh, with height and width set to 50 class is set to accent that's why you have this accent color uh, we have a background theme resource container uh, background brush we have a line thickness of three we can change it to five and uh, you can uh, immediately see the thickness of the line change uh, line cap is flat you can change it to the options called round which will round the edges and the e-spinning property of this is set to true. So that is how you can uh, show a progress bar um, in uh, using the ActiPro ring spinner. So hope you all like watching this video. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up, like, share and do subscribe to my channel. In the next video, we will talk about other ActiPro controls and their usages. Till then, bye-bye.